Yeah, hello. My name is Stefan Eikes, and I'm going to talk about zero downtime upgrades or how we plan to do them at our own Cybex cluster. So at first, I'll talk a bit about our company background, what we are doing, how our Cybex setup looks like, and why it looks like that. And the second part, a bit about the workflow we plan for the next upgrade. And at the end, a small live demonstration of one piece of that automated workflow we intend to do. So uh, let's start it first with our company background. Um, our company is called This5Com GmbH. We're a small German company, about 15 people working there. And we're doing basically two types of businesses. One is, yeah, we call it application service provider. When it started several years ago, now you would mostly say platform as a service maybe for it. And another one is consulting, mostly focused on DevOps and continuous delivery and things like that. And sometimes even combining it so some consultant orders led to us hosting or providing maintenance services for the platforms we do. Most of, the plat of our customer platforms are lotteries, uh, sports betting, but also logistics or insurance or something like that. And uh, yeah, we are managing about a dozen platforms all over Europe, uh, so in several co-location data centers mostly. And we have one central Cebex setup for our ops team to have any issues from every customer in one place to properly work with it. And uh, so our setup is not that large compared to other ones, just about 500 nodes, 50,000 triggers, uh, 50,000 items, 20,000 triggers. And we have strongly integrated this using the API and to our other automated workflows we use for VM creation and stuff like that. So we are not actually using the auto registration features, for example, but it is part of the VM creation workflow to create new hosts uh, with using the API. So. Compared to other setups we heard about, we are 100 times smaller, but still it's quite business critical for us because everything has to be monitored. That's a core part of our business. So uh, yeah, Cebex is used at this five for almost 10 years now, and it was running on real old hardware basically since the beginning until this year. So in this year, we were really doing creating new setup, complete new setup, and had the opportunity and the necessity to really think about how do we want to have it in place, what do we do, want to do with it. And yeah, we had to upgrade from Cebex 2.2 to 3.4 now, and uh, we did focus on having it highly available because we need proper monitoring all the time. And uh, also, while we were planning this upgrade, we were already thinking about the next one. How can we do it easier the next time and still have reliant monitoring all the time? Because that's uh, really important to us. So um, our basic thoughts are we need a distributed infrastructure because in each data center we have uh, proxies, redundant proxies, because uh, we want to be safe against network outages, for example. If uh, the uplink of one data center fails, we still can collect data and gather it afterwards and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, of course, we wanted a centralized monitoring because for our ops team, just one central dashboard showing all problems from everywhere is just how it, if work is most efficient. And uh, yeah, to ensure this works all the time, you need a highly available setup. So this means you need some kind of redundancy almost for everything, and you need some kind of failover tool set. So uh, what do we want, what do we need when we want to really have short downtimes during upgrades? Well, at first we want to create the new instance running the new version while still running the old one in production so that we just have the possibility to uh, switch from one version to another without really having to do a full upgrade uh, procedure to need the time for that. But uh, we want simply to be able to switch between the old instance, the new instance, with as little downtime as possible. Zero is not exactly possible, but maybe we can get it down to about five minutes for each change. That's about the target, because that's just human reaction time to issues anyway, so it doesn't really mean an interruption of our services. And uh, regarding this, we are ignoring agents at the moment because those are downwards compatible all the time, so that can be upgraded afterwards. We are just focusing on the server and the proxies now. 
So in conclusion, we decided to use our redundant infrastructure that we created due to high availability. So accepting a little risk time during the upgrade procedure seems acceptable for us because it runs generally very stable, so we don't see any real issues when maybe for a few hours we don't have a redundant setup. But that's acceptable for us, so this will allow us to reuse the same servers, the same VMs we are using at the moment. And uh, yeah, how does the system architecture look? We have redundant proxies in each data center, so every platform basically has two proxies um, that uh, monitor roughly half of the setup there. And in case of need, we can switch hosts from one proxy to another there if there should something fail. Usually it does not, but of course anything can happen every time. As failover tools, we are using Pacemaker for the actual Zebbix server, so we are running two instances and Pacemaker monitoring it. If one instance fails, just the other one starts. And uh, yeah, Ansible is uh, configuration management and quite good at orchestration, as many of you may know. And of course, it's not really a failover tool, but it is a tool we are using for orchestrating tasks along our cluster, so for kind of let us switch hosts from one proxy to another, or so it's the tool we choose. And uh, yeah, of course, uh, for some redundant parts, load balancing is a great thing. Uh, we are using MariaDB as a database and the max scale load balancer in front of it that's also managed via Pacemaker. And for the front end, we are using HA proxy in front of actually Nginx, uh, not the default Apache. The reason for this is just that we are using Nginx in most of our production environments and have a lot of experience with it, and we also integrated Zabbix web frontend and other internal services into one web server for our internal use. So that's not only hosting the Zabbix frontend, but also other stuff we use internally. And yeah, of course, you need some kind of uh, re database replication, and we use the uh, MariaDB built-in Galera replication, so it's a kind of master-master replication that makes it possible that you just can kill one node, the other one will work fine, you can bring it back, it will resync, it works quite well for us so far. So when uh, we are having a look at how it does look like, uh, kind of a schematics, um, yeah, we have left out the agents here, they would appear here and a very lot of them, and just two proxies, so basically we are showing one environment in this setup. Um, everything that's green is, uh, everything that's running normally during normal operation. The light blue stuff is shut down, it's cold standby. So this Zabbix server will be started via Pacemaker if this one fails, for example. So we have here the connections from Zabbix server to the proxies and to the database through the max scale load balancer. And of course we have here the HA proxy as a load balancer in front of the redundant Zabbix front ends connecting to the database through it. So basically it's very straightforward here. Um, these hollow arrows show which connections would be used if we would fail over to that services there. So when we see this, we have almost everything double, and this means a lot may fail without really interrupting operations. So it is possible to have all these nodes fail and still everything works. Uh, one exception that does not automatically work, as I said, uh, moving Zabbix agents from one proxy to another has to be triggered manually. Uh, the reason why we did choose this is the kind of failures we experience with Zabbix proxies, and this is almost never crashing a proxy. I'm not sure I can remember crashing just the service. But uh, what did happen sometimes is, for example, that just the uplink of that pod in the data center failed or something like that. So in that case, the proxy is not available to the Zabbix server, but it still can monitor the agents that are directly connected to it. So it would not bring any benefits to switch the hosts over to another one. Or for example, if you really have a blackout and uh, everything is going down, then uh, yeah, you have the situation, you don't have anything to monitor, it would also make no sense to fail over them then. So it's really a rare case where it would make sense during normal operation to switch, to do the switch. So we didn't saw the need to automate this. Of course, for Zabbix server and the database components, it's much more important because if something fails there, everything still has to work. That's just business critical. So the basic idea we had is 
as anything may fail, let us use the things that can fail in our workflow. This means uh, we simply split the cluster. As you have seen, we can take out half the nodes and still have operational Fabix cluster. So we can upgrade just one half of the cluster at a time. And this allows us, well, we have to do some reconfiguration inside Cebix to ensure that during the upgrade there is no cross-connection between upgraded server and not upgraded proxies yet. So we have to ensure that during the process, for example, before splitting the database to basically disable anything so that nothing connects, splits the database so that the half that will upgrade simply does not start connecting anything until it is allowed to. So we just do disable everything, split the database cluster, connect one half of the database again to the Zabbix server that stays on, for example, 3.4 now, and activate anything again so that we have a silent second uh, part of the cluster that will be upgraded then. And when we want to have it productive, we change to it and not before that. So uh, this also means that we are simply free which half we can use. Upgrade or rollback when we are doing this simply becomes starting one cluster half, shutting down the other one. So during the evaluation period, it's really simple for us if we experience any issues, whatever it may be, just to go back to the not upgraded cluster half to have time to fix all the issues that might occur. Usually there are none, but we are just being paranoid about this. So uh, this is a uh, a quite complicated workflow at some times, and of course, when having a lot of hosts, you cannot do this manually, especially not fast and not reliant. You have to do it in some other way. So uh, we are using Ansible to create the playbox there because Ansible is an agentless configuration management with a good Zebix API integration. It's just a good tool to orchestrate tasks right along all our cluster, all our customer VMs. And, uh, there's one issue with the standard Cebix modules. They are great for creating or upgrading or updating host configurations, proxy configurations, and all that. But we were lacking some kind of query module. As you may know, in Ansible, you need an inventory with all the hosts uh, Ansible has to work on. And uh, this means, yeah, this would mean you had to write down every VM every server that has to be reconfigured because of the agent configuration and stuff like that. And that's not a very flexible way, that's not a very smart way. You could uh, take all the data sources you have from somewhere to bring it together, but we decided to simply write a small own Ansible module that allows us to query the Zebix API. So basically to make the Zebix server the source of our Ansible inventory. And uh, a draft of this is available on GitHub. It's just a very rough hack, but it works fine for this. And uh, demonstration how this works follows at the end of this talk. So how does it work? How does it look like when we are upgrading? Uh, we see here now all of this is still on Cebix 3.4, for example, and working fine. So all agents would be now connected to this proxy and the Cebix 4.0 server would just upgrade this half of the database that is not replicating to the other node at this time, of course. So uh, this, of course, means that we have some, uh, yeah, well, not continuous data afterwards. We have uh, to live with it, but for us it's okay because we don't really need Cebix to create shiny reports or something like it. We just need it to be able to react to issues. So if at the end some part of the data is in one half of the database and yeah, basically has to get lost after the resync. It's not that important as long as we did have real good reaction times to issues during the upgrade process and didn't have any real issues with that. So for us, it just works great when we are upgrading packages on half of that here. Uh, yeah, we can also do an upgrade of the web front end packages, of course, but at this point, it's not yet important. The most important and time-consuming part is usually the database upgrade. So that's what this part focuses upon. And yeah, as we see here, of course, Pacemaker is not allowed to start up this one at the moment because we really need manual control or yeah, automated control, but not the failover control during this time. 
Yeah, so during the evaluation period, yeah, as I said, this is totally shut down. Uh, we are having then everything that's 4.0 in operation. Uh, we still have for our customers, for example, if they want to have a look at their historic data, all the three, four database stuff in place. And, but in production, we are now using then the 4.0 proxy server database and the 4.0 front end, at least for us internally, to evaluate if everything works. And uh, if not, as I said, we can just switch over all agents to the proxy of 304, shut down this 4.0 server and proxy, and activate again 3.4 server and proxy. That's the basic idea how to do it fast if necessary. So uh, now I'm coming to my little demonstration. Um, I created four VMs for this. Each one is running a Cebex agent and basically two proxies. And I will just show how to do the move of, proxy, uh, of hosts from one proxy to another and how to do it with Ansible. It will sh showcase some of the most basic and important ideas so that we are creating the inventory on the fly using the Cebex API, that we are using Ansible to reconfigure inside the Cebex server and on the responding nodes that have to be reconfigured. Just uh, as you know, there's a server and server active parameter in the Cebex agent configuration. And of course, if it has to connect to another proxy, it has to be reconfigured and restarted there. And that's the reason why we're using Ansible for this, because it just does this orchestration great. Yeah, um, this is also available on GitHub. So if anyone wants to have a closer look at what we did there, you can do it there, and uh, would you switch over, please? Yes, uh, so this is the test server we have. We see here two proxies, and all the four hosts are now monitoring via this one proxy, and I'll just show you how the inventory for Ansible looks like. Just one line. Yeah, basically two. We have to know it is a Cebex web server because this is hosting the API, where it is, so the IP address, and just how to connect to it username, password, quite straightforward. And we don't need to know any other host names where everything is running. We don't need to know the proxies. We don't need to know the names of the agent VMs. So this is able to scale quite well. We don't, yeah, we can every, do everything automatically and dynamically. Yeah, as I said, uh, important thing is, of course, this parameter in the agent configuration that has to be done there, and everything else has to be done on the Cebix server. So I just show it. It won't take long because it's just fast and efficient. It queries the uh, Cebix server for any information about the proxies that were given, the old and the new one. Uh, it queries for any hosts. You see quite a lot of data scrolling through. That's basically everything Cebix knows about these hosts. And then we just uh, replace the server and server active parameters inside the configurations. We start the agent, and in the end, we are simply done here. Everything has worked. We are now seeing that uh, we are monitoring it through the other proxy. And when we check the configuration, we see it's now the other proxy. You may also notice uh, this is the DNS name of the Cebex proxy host. Inside Cebex, it's called the other way, some other name. So we can just uh, get also data about how Cebex connects to the proxy and just use, for example, in this case, a DNS name for the agent configuration. This uh, query and discovery roles for Ansible simply allow us to get any information we need inside uh, Ansible to do anything we may need to change get any information that's necessary. So like here, which agents are connected to which proxy, so which agent do we need to check? And uh, just to prove that this is really working dynamically, what does happen if we execute it again? It starts a discovery and it just says, us, well, nothing to do. There is nothing found on that proxy. Everything has worked fine. So this and some other stuff that still has to be done for the upgrade. It's not yet finished, but the plan will simply allow us to prepare it, press start, press enter for Ansible, and then just watch how everything upgrades, and hopefully everything will work then fine. So that was my talk so far. Thank you very much. Thank you.
questions. Please. Hello, thank you for the presentation. So uh, the first question is, uh, what about running some sort of load balancer like HE proxy in front of the hot code Zabbix proxy setup? Um, I don't really understand why a load balancer in front of Zabbix proxy, to be honest. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm more think like uh, the general idea to uh, make it some sort of uh, later active active or or in the future so that that was the the general if if i'm wrong on that may the the guy who asked this question can elaborate a little bit yeah maybe that would be good <laughs> mr dr zoidberg <laughs> <laughs> uh, the author of the question Okay, I believe then you can ask uh, this question during the break. So this will be fair enough. Uh, then, uh, would you plan to add more uh, nodes into your high availability cluster in the future or you're pretty much okay with that? At the moment, we are pretty much okay with it. Um, we are needing, for example, at the moment about 200 values per second and we had a stress test on our setup. It's managing up to 8,000 values per second, so that's quite enough for us. And uh, as we have everything redundant during normal operations, that's just enough for us. Uh, of course, when adding more customer environments, we will add more proxies to it as uh, everything gets it, but uh, the core components, the database, and the server setup will stay this way, I think, for a long time. I think there would have to be really much growth for us to make it uh, necessary or useful to increase it. I think we would be happy if we would get so many customers, but uh, I don't see it in the near future. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, yes, please. Hello, thank you for your presentation. My question is, uh, during your upgrade, as I understand, you not lost monitoring and notification, yeah? Exactly. It comes and, easy but but finally, finally, after upgrade, after you upgrade all infrastructure, you will lose some part of data yeah, that exactly. collects during upgrade from uh, the reserve uh, from 3.4 to 4, yeah? That's right, yeah. So we would lose the data that was collected by the uh, Zabbix 3.4 server during the... Yeah, and maybe you think how not to lose this da data? Uh, we so far did not really plan about anything about that because for us it's okay. We can just take it out of the 3.4 database to have some graphs that maybe... So, so you are okay but to lose one hour yeah, data? Yeah, in that case we are okay with after upgrade. that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, we also had one question in the middle row. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you have two proxy servers in your configuration. Yeah. What's about uh, their databases. Do you synchronize data between proxy databases or do you think that it is not necessary? No, we are using straightforward the SQLite uh, proxy version, so uh, one database per proxy and don't sync between them. Because, uh, as I said, proxies are running quite stable and if something fails, it's usually really because that rack has a complete issue and we wouldn't really need some monitoring because there would be nothing to monitor. Or so, or it would not be able to replicate in that case. So for this reason, it's just okay for us if each proxy uses its own database. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Any more questions? Uh, okay. I don't see any hands raised, so this means that no more questions. And thank you once again for your presentation. Yeah.